A friend of mine once told me that you should always wear an expensive Swiss watch, Rolex ideally, because in a life or death situation, it will always get you on the last plane out of wherever you are. So if you're in Lebanon and you want to get on the last plane out of Lebanon, you can hand over your Rolex and jump on the plane. And that's a very good way of carrying wealth on you that isn't usually confiscated from you when you know the police come and search you and raid your house, etc. Yeah, freedom... Geographical freedom is very important also because things go wrong all the time. There's famously a bunch of people in Florida now who will not leave their homes, who will not leave their boats, who will not leave Florida at all during this hurricane, which happened, I think, last night or yesterday. And the reason they're not going to leave is because that's all they've got. That house and the stuff in it and the dog living in it with them is all they've got in the world. So what, hitchhike where? To come back and find their whole lives wiped out? They'd rather stay with their stuff. They'd rather die on their hill, quite literally. And I think that geographical freedom, it is, of course, tied to finance. But as an American with the upcoming election, as a citizen of anywhere in the world with a political climate that's uncertain, certainly have your passport. Certainly have friends in other countries that you could stay with. Certainly keep enough money in the bank for a plane ticket. Certainly keep all of these things, you know, in your back pocket. Because if you aren't free geographically, then you can get tied up in stupid situations politically. You know, my brother and I preach this all the time. And ironically, we found ourselves trapped in the country of Romania. But that only happens at a really extreme level. A really extreme level of wealth and influence where, you know, politicians and institutions want to attack you and bring you down. There's nowhere in the world I was safe at that point. However... I'm still very, very free. I'm a very free person. Life is good. I can see any woman I want, any time I like. I fly them in. They come and hang out with me. I see any friends I like from anywhere in the world, war room members, old school friends. They jump on planes. I fly them to me. I'm still free within my house, more so than lots of people who can go wherever they like. Because they can't go wherever they like, can they? They haven't got a passport. They haven't got any bloody money. They sit on the internet tweeting hate tweets about me and my brother about how we're constrained within the country of Romania, which is a very big, very beautiful country. But yeah, I'm very free. If I need to see my mother, private jet, she gets on the jet, she arrives here at my house via chauffeured car. I'm free to do things that a lot of people aren't, even though I'm constrained. So freedom is an interesting concept, and there's very many different ways to measure it. But it's also very important. Whatever you feel like freedom is... If you feel it's going to make you happier, it's something that you should definitely pursue. To Americans, to become more globally free, I'd say, first and foremost, fear of the unknown is what's keeping you where you are. Get a passport, get a little bit of money, go to other places. Go visit Poland, go visit Thailand, go visit Indonesia, go visit places where an American could very easily go and set up shop and live. And I would advise you to do that because... As your situation gets worse in the United States, let's say Kamala Harris wins the presidency, and as things double in price and things become more violent and there's more mass migration across the southern border and your cities become unsafe, if you don't know what other countries are like, the propaganda machine on the TV telling you you're in the land of the free and the home of the brave, greatest country on earth, is going to sway you into staying in that shitty situation. Whereas if you knew the other countries, if you had been once to Poland and looked around and you thought, well, I'm a computer programmer, I could live and work here, you would not stay in the United States for half a second if things got any worse. Because the world is an amazing place. And I always know people are ignorant when people say, why do you live in Romania? I live in in the Americas, the best country in the world. Why do you live in Romania? You're American. Why don't you live here? I'm like, have you ever been to Romania? They're like, no. There you go. Bucharest is better than most American cities for lots of different reasons. And American cities have their advantages. And, you know, Bucharest has its advantage. In terms of safety, it's safer safer than any American city ever. Any American city in the United States, Bucharest is safer than. So, you know, don't you can't make the leap of faith to do something different with your life if you are completely in the dark about what's out there.